Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the evolution of consciousness. And part of my big vision about consciousness is our power to create, being creators, emulating creation. I think we incarnate to be creators. And that's why I'm so happy to be talking to one of my new favorite creators, Deborah Kauf Chapin, and she has some beautiful images she's going to share with us, her soul deck, her portal decks. I mean, they are just portal of presence. That's really what I want to focus on. But first, I want to talk about the power of art. And, you know, I just think we're here to create. But you, I mean, you. we talked the other day and you said the, you talked about the power of art. What do you think the value of art is in general? I think um, way back before our current culture, <laughs> arts were integrated um, into our life in a sacred way as ritual. So the arts were how we connected with spirit. You know, the, the, um, the birth of shamanism is totally integral with the birth of arts, creating masks, dancing, singing. They are core... The, the, the original um, emergence of art, I feel, was out of a core um, uh, search for a relationship with life and with the planet. And um, what has happened to art in current times it has become a commodity, an investment, and also something that sets people apart, mm. um, where there are certain people who have it and the rest of them don't and don't bother doing it. There's no other reason to do it if you're not gonna be successful at it by our culture standards. So um, I do feel that is, there are beginnings of change in that. Um, you know, I, I teach, I'm in, involved with the world of the expressive arts therapies and the places where they're teaching people to engage in the arts um, for inner process is where we're getting back in contact with that source place, um, that source reason for creating. You know, what you're talking reminds me about that um, Potter woman, MC, what was her name? MC? MC Richards. Yes. yes. Isn't yes. She, she talked yeah. all about that power of creation and, and coming from the core self. And, and it's, it is a connection to the divine art. It, is our way of getting out of the way and accessing these other realms. Absolutely. And we begin with accessing our own self. <laughs> we have to begin there and then deeper things can emerge out of that. But you have to start with where you are and being real and authentic with where you are in the moment. And that's the expressive arts help people begin with that and then they can continue and really deepen. Wow. Um, if you keep going with it, yes. Well, look yeah. at children. They love to paint. They love to dance and sing and all mm -hmm. those. And, and, and we all have that. But yes, like I liked what you said or didn't like it, but it was true that we're educated away from it. We're, we're taught to like only a few people, only a few special people can be artists. And, you know, we are all at the core, these creators, so right and we're creating our life and everything that we do in our life is also part it's not just putting paint on canvas but creativity is our how we engage with life but i feel like art forms are a great place to practice mm -hmm. <laughs> an essential safe place to practice those things and then we also bring them into our how we live right but i think you know, you've been an artist a long time, but I think there's something special when that becomes your focus and something special about your art, because as I look at your images, I see that they transcend the personal self. They, and I think this is with your decks, at least, is what you want to bring to people, a, a transcendence of, right? Um a transcendence and um, a maybe an enlargement of our identity. Yeah. So it's not so much to lift away, to become more um, connected and related to the whole. Yeah. yeah. 
So your process of creating, I mean, you're going to demonstrate this and you're going to talk about your creation yes. and the power mm -hmm. of that. But yeah. I just want to ask you before you demonstrate your touch, what did you call it? Touch for? Touch drawing. Touch drawing. Touch drawing. Drawing with touch. Yeah. So why is it so important to have art in our lives? What does that do for us? Is question I keep coming back to um again it, the, well I just have to go back one more time to say the word art has so many different definitions yeah. so we have to be careful when we talk about it mm -hmm. you know if it's so how I define art yeah. <laughs> is that core process where we allow to flow through us what is within us and make it visible in the world or release it from our being in a um, in a form. <laughs> so we go from inner to outer, in a sense, of uh, from with our experience. And then you affect um, other people too, because you're giving them like if I hear a song, sometimes it hits me in a way where I didn't know I was feeling that, you know, right. and your images are like that, too. It's like you're some of them are shocking. Some of them are soothing and they all reflect myself. They all we take it all in. So you're giving mm -hmm. me more of myself with your creation. So thank you. I mean, my feeling has been um, the dedication to just keep doing it and doing it since 1974. I've been doing this since 1974. And the growth from the personal to the transpersonal, you know, would be, I, I would, could be one line that you could describe. If you go deeply enough into the personal, it becomes more than personal. And um, I, I think that's why the soul cards, which we'll get to a little more specifically yeah. later, touch people and it has been so touching to me to see how people find themselves in my art and, yeah. and the cards have been a vehicle for my art they've been the best vehicle for my art yeah. and maybe the best vehicle for understanding the self or realizing the deep self because where do these images don't come from the personality they they actually are accentuating the transpersonal you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so when you are doing this, I well, you'll look, you want to start with how you create and and talk, yeah, yeah. and talk I about the so. process, uh, yeah. yeah, about yeah. going like how where you start from inside yourself. That's precisely the yes. that's what I want to talk about, right. and um, it's best if you just see the process, and we're not trying to describe. Okay. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm just pulling you back okay, and making a little adjustment so um, you can see. Mm -hmm. There, you can see my board pretty well, right? Yeah, what is it we're looking at? What is so, it? Wow. This is okay. just a board. It's just like a, a fiber board, a, surface, a smooth surface. And, it's and on it huh? is wet. So I have taken, I did this ahead so I don't have to waste the time. I have paint it's out of water mixable oil paint yes. and I put some on and I rolled it smooth so you'll get to see that's that's the surface it's that is what paint. I call the board it's black paint on a board it's pa ro paint rolled on a board exactly okay okay then and I will tell the story very briefly in pictures after I demonstrate you will see more about how this happened you're going to give us an original right here, right? Right, right here. And right now I'm going to do a touch drawing. Right. So and you teach this too, right? I teach this process and that's where I have learned the power of it to see other people doing it beyond just myself. And that's also part of that story is that I knew this process wasn't just for me. So this is a thin paper so you can see what I'm doing more clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, when I um, teach, we use this. My own drawings are done on heavier paper. So what I am doing now is I'm not going to do a beginner's touch drawing. I will do my touch drawing. Right. I'm drawing a face. Okay. Is, and, the, um, is the face appearing to you as you do it? 
Right. I can see it as I do it. I don't know what else. All I do is be in the moment. Mm -hmm. So as I'm touching, I'm actually sensing in my own face, or I would say maybe it's a, a layer of my face that I have developed that it seems to be sensitive to subtle realms. <laughs> but it's kind of laid right, it's right on my face. But I don't feel like someone is coming inside of me. What, so can you see? Oh yeah, that's much? better. That's there, better. that's better. Yeah, yeah, I have to keep sort of moving around right. there. Wait, we say that um, again, it's a layer of your face. A layer of my face. I'm internally sensing these sort of shapes and movements in my own forehead. Uh -huh. and. And, um, but I don't feel like I'm drawing me right now. I feel like it's, it's, it's a meeting with another being. And, you know, I'm demonstrating. It, demonstrations sometimes have more sense of authenticity than others. I never know for sure, but. Are you feeling another being with you as you do this? Well, so what I'm doing is feeling I'm beginning to feel and sense a presence. Mm. And so it's both a combination of movements and shapes inside of me and also feeling like, yes, somebody is here. Yes, there is a, a presence taking shape right here. I can see this is not your first time. You, you're a really expert. Right. <laughs> and are you getting a message or a feeling of uh, emotion or some kind of? Um, it's more like presence. Yeah. And message. Might be that the, this being is available for messages, <laughs> for relationship, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to pull it off now. Oh, okay. Like I said, it would just take a couple of minutes. I'm going to put another sheet behind it so you can just see this. Is that complete, though, now? Well, I would say this is a complete touch drawing right now. Wow. Yes. It has so much feeling in it and so much expression. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular message you feel from that? Um, I am not one who gets a, a sense of verbal. That is not or mental. Uh -huh. So for me, the creation of the drawing, I feel the relationship. I feel the presence mm. through creating the image, which is what moves me to be an artist, <laughs> to create images. Right. This is sometimes I think um, one of my um, yeah, half jokes yeah. has been that um, it's like in doing touch drawing, it's almost like I'm blind, I can't see. Some people see beings, right? right. They right. don't, I don't see a full blown something and then sketch it out. I just sense the beginning of presence and I put that down on the paper and I trust. Mm. I just trust and I pay attention and um, allow it to take form. And my desire in doing it is to feel and see that presence. But there's so much diversity in your decks and yes. range of emotions. Yeah. Yes. Talk. Yes. So the slide, little slideshow that I put together goes into all of those things. So I think if we're going to yeah. talk about that, we can move right into that because we can... Now that you've seen how I create these, mm -hmm. yes. that's yes. clear. When I teach people, we start at the beginning. You know, we start, just move your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Just be real, be authentic, touch the paper, see what happens. Yeah, I, it's okay, we'll get to all. Um, but um, what was your early process? I'm curious, as an artist, how did you come to this touch? drawing okay. moment. So I'd like to share screen now because I'm oh, going yes. to share Please about share screen. Right. Great. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. This is a, a depiction of your touch drawings, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. I, I included this because it's what it feels. It's a touch drawing of the feeling of creating a touch drawing. Right. 
You've wow. got it. It is the cosmos, can... though. You're yes. tapping into the yeah. grids of creation here. Mm -hmm. And so now I will tell a little bit about where it came from. Yes. This is actually a pen and ink drawing that I did in high school. So I'm only, this is a, a mini, mini version of my story. But um, I found this not that long ago. I found this one and went, wow, that was like what I do. I did a drawing of what I do now when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Here's a being kind yeah. of above me. It was all wanting to happen. <laughs> it was all there uh, from the beginning. Were you an artist your whole life? Was that all you wanted to do was be an artist? Yeah, that was like one of those kids. And I did a lot of theater in high school. I sang in a really, really active semi-professional choir. Um, you know, I, I did dance. So I was one of those of my generation who did all the arts. Wait, wait. And I, I, yeah. No, it's just wondering where you, where you grew up. Where did you go? Where, where I grew up in, um, born in Brooklyn and grow, grew up in Rockland County, New York. So you were and, in the arts, yes. And yes, yes. What were you going to say? Yes. What were you going to say about But I, I remember, you know, feeling like I had to choose an art form mm. and realizing that in doing visual art, I would have more, um, more freedom to be myself. When I thought about things like theater, you know, you had to audition, you'd get parts that you don't really care about, you know, I, I recognize that as a visual artist, I would have f the freedom to truly create directly without all that other system. And mm -hmm. that kind of weighted my choice to go to art school, visual art school. And so I went to Cooper Union in New York City. Here we are. Yeah. There I am. There you um, are. <laughs> there I am in the early 70s at Cooper Union. I had a loft on Broadway that I fixed up with a couple of other students. And I had entered the mystique of the con of the minimal abstraction and the conceptual. Yes, concept that was big in the seventies, wasn't? It? Everybody wanted right. to just do minimal stuff. Right. So I never understood it, though. Did you? <laughs> well, I dove into it because there was a mystique to it, and I I really believed and felt that art, that creating art it was always for me the way to feel closest to God. That's how I thought of it. So being an artist, and I assumed that everybody who wanted to be an artist wanted that. Mm -hmm. But when I got to New York, it's like, maybe that's not everyone's reason for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did my four years in art school in New York City, but very much down in the Soho art world, right. because I, had, I got a loft as a student. Uh, we fixed it up. We did a lot of sweat equity to make it livable. Um, so there were things that I learned, th things that I learned in this about process. I was moving these panels. It was very contemplative. It had its place in my overall arc. Right. You but, know, but, yes. No, go, I was just saying the set, the art scene in the 70s was becoming revitalized. But what were you going to say? But it had it so, but there was also part of me that was searching for something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show two examples here. This is a willow tree with, um, you see all the beautiful marks, those natural markings. They're being created by the willow tree. On sand? Is that sand? On sand. And it was on retreat land the Cooper Union used to own. And um, someone had pointed that, that out to me. And when I saw it, I, I went like ecstatic and I took a whole roll of film. This was this, this spark of um, nature, nature is drawing. And it was this excitement of the possibility of something that was more natural. I was searching for something more natural. It reminds me of Noguchi, you know, how he would take these stones, right? You know, his work and yeah. just do yeah. a little bit, but keep the natural stone and you weren't sure what's nature and what's created. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And then here's one more precursor to finding touch drawing. It's a little doodle. And um, believe it or not, I kept it <laughs> and found it. And it was uh, maybe a handful of months before touch drawing happened in my life. You'll see in the upper right, what's wrong with drawing faces? Mm -hmm. 
um, and you'll see um, who cares study nature and these embarrassing little doodles and it felt like I had drawn a dirty drawing it felt like an embarrassment why did it feel that way to you well because I'd been in art school all this time and and these were stupid um. <laughs> they were stupid they are stupid right well, no, but no. giving myself permission to do these little doodles, mm -hmm. I think that was a profound moment of germination of what was to come. And, and I think one of my points on the larger level is to trust some of these moments that may seem like nothing. <laughs> Try to say yes to the little authentic moments in our life. You do not know what will grow from them. So, um, you just wanted to do that then. You just felt like you, it was coming out of you. Right. I just had this question, what's wrong with drawing faces? And I let myself, I've been doing these abstract things all this time, all this, you know, this minimalism. What about, I you? and it was a remembering that I used to do art that actually meant something to people. Oh. You know, when I was drawing those human forms in high school. Mm -hmm. And, and that my art didn't actually speak to people anymore. I had had a friend come over from high school and see my art, and they were just like blank. And it was shocking to me that they were blank. You're not seeing what I'm doing? Because they weren't into the whole art school, art world, conceptual conversation. You wouldn't understand what it is without that part of it. So you went to school at Cooper Union to get into the abstract uh, conception. And then when did you discover the faces? How what, How much later? This was in my, la so touch drawing. That little doodle was in my senior year in 1974. And uh, touch drawing happened on the last day of my last year at Cooper Union. The very last day. Wait, can you go back to that other picture before? That was just one. Was that this? Yeah, that's a current that's a current photograph of me with my hands on the paper like the demonstration drawing oh i see no. yes because so. I, I don't have a photograph of me doing touch drawing back then but this is one of my first touch drawings and it was done on a paper towel in the print shop where a friend had asked me to help clean up and in the moments before cleaning um i there's more details to the story. I don't want to get lost in them. I took a moment to let myself play. And that's another point, the allowance of play. And I moved my fingertips on the back of the paper towel before using it to wipe the ink off. Mm -hmm. And I picked it up and here were these marks that had come directly from my fingertips. Mm -hmm. Think of the willow tree that those marks in sand had come directly from the willow tree. This was the equivalent. Mm -hmm. My body had actually created these natural lines. Mm -hmm. um, that it blew me open energetically. So it's more satisfying than having a brush, would you say? For me, for me it is. It's an entirely different experience. It's just direct. It's not a step removed and making a picture of you're actually giving birth. You're feeling it move directly through your body. So you're giving uh, your energy right to the image directly. It's a direct transmission of energy, yes, through the body. From you, and yeah. So what happened, um, in those moments, I felt um, kind of suspended in time. So something in me opened up. <laughs> I opened up to something that felt like it was outside of time. Mm -hmm. And I thought of the handprints on the cave walls. And I felt something in the future with people's hands directly creating. And I actually had a, I had a feeling that this process was an evolutionary human process meant to be done by people in the future to match where our consciousness is changing. Mm, beautiful. And, you know, I love sharing this with you because I really feel like you, you know, sometimes I, I tell the story and people go, oh, story. Like, you get that. <laughs> I get it. And I'm just 
realizing the magic of those ancient people who put their hands on the cave wall and suddenly they duplicated life itself. You know, they they created a mark. This is a human thing to create an image. Yeah. And there was a realization as well about the future that this process, which I didn't have a name for yet, was coming to counteract technology. Mm. <laughs> I had no idea about computers. This was 1995, you know, people creating images on electronic pads and things. But that was a counterbalance to high technology. And so uh, here I am laughing hysterically doing these drawings in, in the print shop, crawling on the floor, picking up more paper towels, because this energy coming through me was making me laugh. But simultaneous with the laughter was this realization that this was not just for me. This was a universal human creative process. And so... Um, after doing a whole bunch of these scribbly things that look sort of like trees and nature on paper towels, then I started drawing faces. This was all in that time in the print shop. That's why I go back to that what's wrong with drawing faces and how the fact that I gave myself permission to do that little doodle was a germination of the seed of possibility of this process. They're pretty embarrassing drawings. <laughs> Last day in art school. Well, the first day in art school, you know. Right. The first day. of It was the first day of my new life, really. Right. And um, I recognized um, that as childlike as they were, they were profound in their directness and authenticity. And I knew that and recognized it. And so I kept doing touch drawing. Wait, you so know, when you did it. On. You did it and you'd step back and say, look what you did. What would you feel about your own creation when you would see it? Um, well, what I did in that time period, in those few first you know, few months of doing touch drawing, I would hang them on the wall. Um, all, there'd be a whole series of drawings. They were on small paper, you know, like um, legal size. This one here is a few weeks into touch drawing on legal size paper. You can see the lines or the marks of the legal paper. Yeah. And I would hang the whole series up on the wall and read it like a book. And it would be like a little electroencephalograph of my psyche, just doing these subtle changes. And I would just read my psyche and go like, oh, I'm changing. Look, I'm transforming. Mm -hmm. So I got that sub inner transformation reflected back to me. So these are a couple of touch drawings. It was a powerful set that I did on the night that I was thought I was going to die mm -hmm. and creating touch drawings in the midst of that feeling kept me from even fear <laughs> it creating in this moment of feeling like I was dying um enabled me to contact you know the life force and something that felt worthwhile to do in those moments and so there's lo I have longer slide talks where I go more into detail on those things. Now I'm going to show just two or three touch drawings from a little bit later. This is when I, here you can see that there's more evolution in my technique. It's a year or two into touch drawing. Um, I'm doing lines, I'm shading with my fingertips. You've been doing all this done. now for 40 something years, right? Yes, I have. Now I have. This, these touch drawings were maybe, maybe two years, a year and a half into doing touch drawing. I was really developing a language of the psyche. Again, there's longer versions of this talk where I share more of these, but the point of this here, first you'll see the transformations that I was bringing myself through. Um, I would say now both of these were me. These were two facets of my psyche. <laughs> I think I identified more at the time with the, the one below. <laughs> and here's this hole in the heart going through standard things a young 21 year old will go through in their life <laughs> emotionally. Right. And I have this hole, I'm putting my hand, these are all done from felt sense, not from an idea. I feel a circle, I put, the, you know, I do the line, I, you know, I don't know, oh, here's something on top. 
That's how they emerge. Here's another one from that series. There might have been 12 drawings in this series. Look at the evolution from that hole in the heart to what feels more like a reverberating open heart. And the two hands, it's like an integration of those two parts of me into a wholeness. And did you, was that actually happening for you and your life as you created this? I, I feel like the doing of the process was taking my psyche through my own organic transformational healing journey, just in the doing of the drawings. Mm, yes. Great, great. And great. then the last, one of the last, there's another one after it, but I, I, I selected this one to show that even this early, that sense of um, transpersonal, that sense of a sacred being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a Jesus type being. It looks like that, right? <laughs> I didn't even think about it much at the time. This is when I was going through old drawings, putting slide programs together. I went like, oh, wow, look at that. Look what I drew way back then. To, so that journey, but but this was in the same series in which I let myself contort into my little self and my big self. All that in maybe an hour, mm -hmm. an hour of doing touch drawing, where I go from one to another to another. So when I, when I demonstrated, I did a single one. The power of this process is you start with the first one, and that's where when I said you can let yourself be your pure human, whatever it is, self. Let that out on the board. Give it shape, like I did, say, with this drawing. <laughs> um you know, let out your, but just be present in the moment and, and organ my psyche guided me through a healing process in the act of creating. Oh, and you also say you do personal portraits for others as I you do. talk about that a little bit, because that's, okay. yeah, because I think that's really um, important. Yeah. Yes, I do. I, since about 1982, um, I was demonstrating touch drawing at a Gene Houston workshop, and someone came up to me and said, you can do that, you know? And I, I said, what do you mean you can do that? I, I can do, I don't know what you mean. And she said, you're picking up on people as you demonstrate, you're drawing the people who are there. And I said, am I? And she said, come over to my house and I'll show you. <laughs> I went over to her house, we set up an appointment in, in New York City, and um, I did a series of drawings for her. And it was very informal. We sat and chatted, and I just did a bunch of touch drawings. And she related very deeply to them. At one point, she came out, and she she went. And she said, excuse me, I have to go get something. She went out, and she got a photograph of someone very beloved to her who had died the previous year. And she said, you just you just drew this person. Mm. It's six And so I wouldn't have presumed that I could do this for people. I think I needed someone else to tell me. And over time, I have evolved my own way to hold that space where I, I sit and we actually do it now over Zoom and we can gaze at one another. And then I sit and I do a series of touch drawings. It will be probably between 12 and 16 drawings. I'll work very intensively for and sometimes two hours straight. And it's like a soul portrait you're doing. It's a soul portrait. And it's many facets. Yeah. I'm many facets. It's not a singular being. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. And so now here's the evolution. Way I would say these were created maybe in the 90s. So I started with touch drawings done in 1974, 78. We're skipping forward to maybe the late 80s. No, the late 80s and the 90s. Um a lot of development of the technique happened in this time. And it was selections from this body of work that created, that became both Soul Cards 1 and 2. So I'm just going to share, I have a few of them here. So you can see the scope from those little childlike scribbles. If I hadn't done touch drawing in that childlike way, I would not be doing this. So when people think they should jump forward, I say, go back to what's authentic. 
be raw, be real, and let your own authentic voice and visual language evolve and grow from there. And it can happen much more quickly for people. I mean, different for every person. Well, so these are all done with my say that, that last one was very sculptural. You know, it's yes. very 3D and it probably is because you're actually touching the image. You're, you're not painting. I'm rubbing. And at this point in doing touch drawing, I'm working very slowly. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on layers. There's some blotches of color on the paper before I do the touch drawing. And also several of these, I, I put a, this one, I know I did it. I moved it from one drawing board that was deep blue and a drawing board that was deep red and a drawing board that was sort of a golden yellow. Mm -hmm. So I did layers. I rubbed very slowly, rubbing so it is sculptural. It's almost like working in clay, where I'm rubbing more hard to make it deeper. Oh, yeah. yes. Um, and this and, and so they had some washes of color on the background, like this yellow. Mm -hmm. And I was, at this time period, I was just doing blotches and color on my background paper and finding the image within that. All of the forming of the image, like those fingers are drawn with touch drawing. They're drawn with the touch of my fingertip. They are, they're so they are. detailed. The All hand. that is done, that face is done only with my fingertips. But the hands slow. are so detailed, they're so good. All fingertips, all fingertips, and just slow work. Does so it, this is where it went from this. You, does it feel yeah. like for that last one, like you were touching the being as the being was touching you? It's a touching. <sighs> okay, just that's all right. I think I here. Here's what I could describe. I could describe that in this time period of working, I would be into creating, and I'd just be so in it that I'm just in it. I'd work for two, three hours on a single touch drawing, and when I got up and stood up to leave, I would notice. <gasps> Ah, I'm, I'm disengaging from a presence. I would notice when I was separating from it, that I was separating from it. Mm, I love that. So really you were entering another world dimension. Um, communion, more like yeah. a communion. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Yes. And again, this figure, three different drawing boards, the same touch drawing and rubbing along with some other washes. So I was just, you know, I was actually a, a mother of a young child while I created a lot of these. In a certain way, life is simpler. <laughs> She'd go to school, I'd, get, I'd go to the studio. You know, I wasn't traveling. Um, and, and this was really my deep communion creative engagement, yes. This was create. before you made a deck. This is all pre- these are just right. your creation. Pre deck, we're leading right into it because all of these are in the Soul Cards One or Soul Cards Two. This is these are all in the decks. This reminds me of somebody I know, actually. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Who's a cobbler. see? People can make personal associations, and that's beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, what I'm sharing are a few of the touch drawings that I was doing that I ended up selecting to be in um, Soul Cards. It's not just that the images are so powerful, it's the way you're creating them that adds to that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah they come from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing about touch drawing. I also think it has to do with the rise of the feminine, the rise of the feminine principle. Because when you think of creating with a pen, a pencil, a brush, it's a, it's a projectile making a mark and having impact right and touch drawing is like giving birth to images mm, it, it's right. a different relationship to the images and so i do think it is a a feminine principle creative process beautiful beautiful and this is nice what is wait that last one when you're seeing through yeah, yeah. What, what's going on here? Because this is well, I did these drawings, right? I just do when I do them, I'm not thinking concept. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I can't remember specifically. These were all so long ago. But um, I do see it as this open space and these beings are peeking through this open space. Right. It's, it is, you could see it as a portal, you yeah. know, as a doorway. Yes. A and I did do a little paint touch up on the, of the color of the faces um, mm -hmm. later. So there are variations in the soul cards, slightly different ways that I worked them. Because what I did was um, in, in creating the soul card decks, all I did was look through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of my touch drawings. And I took photographs of a bunch of them mm. and um, that might look good as a deck. And, and I printed them in those days. It was little prints because <laughs> we're talking 1995 was when I was first doing this. And, um, uh, and then I just narrowed down and narrowed down out of many, many hundreds of possibilities. None of them were created to be in a deck. Right. They were just done in the pure state of creative practice. So what's the idea of putting them in a deck? What were you hoping to communicate in this deck? <clears throat> well, what I have found is, um, is that people see themselves they see themselves and if there's anything an artist can do and people have intimate relationship with the images profound intimate relationships so i have put them in the form of a deck they don't have a system they are not not an oracular system they don't have written meanings it actually putting them in the form of a deck puts them intimately into people's lives. People have intimate relationship with my artwork. Mm -hmm. It is so profound. They don't go into a gallery and just see the gallery. And, and what I realized was, well, there's a whole other part of the story where I left the art world. And I had this feeling like I had to find another way to be an artist. And, and, and it had to do with, because there was all of this, the drama and the investment and the money and the tragic artist stories. And at a certain point, I, in that first summer after Touch Drawing came to me, there was like a moment of awakening to a different way to be an artist. And that to connect with nature and to be healthy and to be connected to community I, that that was actually a more universal way to be an artist than the way we defined an artist in our culture at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, so soul cards, without my realizing it, ended up being my anti-gallery <laughs> action to make my artwork directly accessible to be in people's lives. Right. And um, I didn't know if it would work. It was very risky. Soul Cards 1, 1995. Soul Cards 2, um, in 2000. Was there an um, evolution to the cards from one deck to the next? Um, you know, there's a shift in the color mix. But, um, you know, I can't, I can't say that one is before the other. I think they just hold their own as a whole, each one. And when you have both, you have a richer array of images what i did when i was selecting them was look in my body of work into my human psyche and select the broadest range of uh, feelings that i could find so that that was accessible to people not only the sweetness and light not only the pretty ones but the pain of life to sort of honor the sacredness of that as well to honor the spectrum of feeling in life and it was putting my artwork into a form where people would give it deep attention mm -hmm. and a couple someone had suggested i do a deck and i thought i'd just give it a try and then someone else i showed it to and he was blown away by them and said you have to do this deck it was like i didn't really know but 1995 to 2021 um you know, they're selling more these days than they were in the early 2000s, you know, it's, or the mid-2000s. They have, there's like a whole generation of people now 
who are working with the soul cards or who've grown up with the soul cards. I'll meet someone who said, I worked with the soul cards when I was a teenager. <laughs> so it's amazing. 26 years, I think, that they exist. Well, people work with them in the sense they pick a card and then they reflect about what it means for them. Exactly. And the guidebook gives creative suggestions, journal writing, um, deep gazing, moving. The guidebook actually is a little expressive arts guidebook. It gives you expressive arts practices to use with the images. Right. Um, yes. So yes. let's go to this latest deck, which is really. Where's, where are we? Here. here we are. I am going to talk about the latest deck because here I am. <clears throat> so all the soul cards were created in the studio in this kind of deep, slow time. But um, I have also been taking my artwork and my touch drawing out, especially in the years since I published those two decks. Here I am hiking on Mount Baker, um, mm -hmm. carrying my drawing materials. Um, and I'm going to show a picture. Uh, so I'm going to just get this moving here and I can talk about it. Um, so I have carried my that, uh, drawing bag with the materials all over the world, really, when I travel. Here I am actually on top of Mount Pilchuck where there's a view, a little viewing station, a little um, where they would watch for fires. So it's actually quite a luxury. I don't know if you can hear the rain now, but um, um, you're watching me draw here. Is something, and, happen, is something different happen when you are out in nature with your work? What, yes, I would say uh, it's another type of, I talked about a sense of communion before with a, a certain soul level. And when I'm out in nature, it's a communion with the Davic presence of that place, with the life of that place. Here you're seeing that's the heavier paper. And you're seeing that I'm, I'm picking it up. I've just been doing this touch drawing of a face. This is on the top of Mount Pilchuck. I had a little time that no one was there. <laughs> I was all alone. And I took the drawing out into the, de out into the deck and I had a little iPhone with me. So this is quite recent, a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> and I just sort of brought the image out to sort of connect with the place, like offering it. Is there a different quality of presence? So the soul decks were more you coming from the inside out. Is this coming more from the outside in? Um, you know, that is a good way to think about it. Or it's from um, relationship with um, other beings of life. Yes. Where yes. is mountain? Where's this mountain, Gilchuk? Mount Pilchuk, when I am sitting right here in my studio I'm and it's clear, island. I can see Mount Pilchuk from my studio. Is it part and, uh, of, which way is it? Is it the part Cascade of the Cascade Mountains? It's the Cascade the Mountains. Cascades. It's yes. north of Rainier towards mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, it. I see. And I see. so here's just some quick examples. Here I am uh, drawing under an ancient yew tree. I have drawn under yew trees. We visited a lot of ancient yew trees in Wales. This one is near Roslyn Chapel. Oh. And here's a touch drawing that I did beneath this tree that I just placed it on the tree. Again, I'll often just sort of let it spend time in its place. Yew trees were the symbol of the underworld, you know. Yeah, they're, they're very deep trees. Here I am in Roslyn Chapel that I happened in Scotland, um, outside of Edinburgh. I happened to have found myself there a few times and I'm in the crypt and I'm doing touch drawing. And what I've done you, that. What did you feel though? What emerged from you in those, well, those places? Here's one, here's one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm showing drawings that I actually selected to be in the Portals of Presence deck where I actually also have a photograph of me where in that place. Um, I'm not sure if I did this drawing on that trip because I've drawn there several times, so but this was to, done in the crypt. Yes. So you went to different earth portals like Roslyn Chapel and mountains and- Exactly, here is um, Iona, the Isle, Isle of Iona. And this is a little St. Orange Chapel where I would sing. 
And I would draw every night. I had a little room I would draw at night. This was done during a 10-day retreat on the Isle of Iona in Scotland. Are these beings different than the soul cards, would you say? Are they different? I would say there's a different, there's definitely a different focus. In a way, the soul cards are um, a soul, the story of a soul, of a human soul. Yeah. The state of a human soul. And these are um, engagement, relationship with other presences of life. Yes. 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 Yeah, more, I love talking to you about this. Yeah. Here I was really blessed to go to, this is in Tikal in Guatemala with um, Papa Pedro, uh, Papa, Tata Pedro. I know Tata uh, Pedro, he, I've talked to him, yes. He, he passed this year, he I don't did. know if you know that. He, no, I didn't know that. He was a beautiful guy. I think he, he said, I don't remember what he said, but he, we had a real connection. Me and I was blessed to um, meet them, go down, do a little group event, and his wife, and he invited me to travel with them for another week. So, well, so he, was, he would say, "Yeah, uh, what? No, I was just gonna say he was the real thing. He was dropped into a place. Yeah, what yeah. We think he and what he did was say, he told me, you do your ceremony. He would do the fire ceremony, and he wanted me to draw." Mm. so that's what we did what did you come up with here is this one from the fire ceremony this is one from from tikal and this is also in the deck yes mm. so these the spirit the lineage of a place the spiritual lineage maybe the um the subtle beings behind a spiritual lineage so it's a kind of combination of your soul and the place itself in a way that's and a sort of a me coming into relationship with the soul of a place or the presence of a um a spiritual lineage really this is the fairy and human relations congress i don't know if you know about that on oh, where um, is this? From washington. this is in eastern washington um i've been involved for about nine years now um it's, it's probably the strongest place where there's a gathering that's um really about learning to communicate with the subtle realms of life. Um, many wonderful teachers. Yeah. What's it called, this place? The Fairy and Human Relations Congress. Oh, the okay. place, it's, it was Scalitude. It's not happening in Scalitude anymore, mm -hmm. which is sad. But the spirit of the event still lives on and still continues. So that's a photograph someone snapped of me sitting in that exact field that I had shown you at dusk. There I am. So just about from that spot, uh, we're in the Saturday night ritual, and I plunk myself down in the middle of the field at dusk, and I am drawing these faces. It's particularly exciting to do it there because there is this sense that many beings have gathered at the Fairy and Human Relations Congress. And sometimes it felt like, I felt like the cosmic face painter. Right. That's <laughs> like we're waiting online to get our human face painted. <laughs> so I, I have drawn there many, you know, for nine years. Um, when, you, and when you draw there, do you feel the presence of those beings more when you're drawing them there? It's when I'm drawing that I feel them. Uh, it's the, the space of drawing that I is my access place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As David Spangler would say, I study very deeply with David Spangler and highly recommend him. Um, it, it, it's my ally space. It's my alliance space. So it's the field, the subtle field that I have developed over all these years where my, I can come to meet a being in a safe way, in a way that's not like someone has is taken over by a being. I, I, it's, it's a place of meeting mm -hmm. yeah. and I have a subtle sensation and they come to me and I translate in, 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 when I'm drawing a face, it's a particular focus and I am doing a translation of their presence into human form. And, and David Spangler's work is that, what does he say about the earth? And I mean, what's David Spangler's basic, uh, um, it, it, what he has, um, landed on calling it incarnational spirituality mm -hmm. and it's the sacredness of being incarnated 
Yes. Um, one of his inner teachers in the early years um, said to him, and it's one of the core thoughts, um, the problem with humanity is not that you're too incarnated, is that you're not incarnated enough. I agree. I told we need to be embodied in as grounded a way in order to appreciate the incarnation or what's the point, right? And the sake and that it is not a punishment. It is a sacred act. I told yeah. you, it, there's nothing yeah. more sacred than yeah. the spirit in flesh, you know, and in, yes. in form. Yeah. And, and, and so over all these many years, I met him in 1980. So this is a very long arc. Mm -hmm. I've been reading his books before that. Um, you know, I'm sort of in that circle of people who are friends slash students, colleagues of I David. Should, um, I should interview him years. sometime. I think you he, absolutely should. All right. Yes. He's Wonderful. That. Yes. Yes. Good. He sort of dropped out of sight. He was big for a while in the 80s. He wrote a bunch of books and then I hadn't heard from about him. Well, mention that. it's because he has a small independent publisher. So. His books are not in bookstores. They don't promote them. It's just the people who find him to study. Well, I and would like to talk to him. That'd yeah. be wonderful. I can help. I can facilitate that. Thank you. Thank um, you. I, I love him dearly and I'm so grateful because everything that I was already doing in my life and my whole journey, once I got the articulation that he was working on articulating, <laughs> it's gotten clearer all the time, I felt at home. I felt like, yes. First of all, this describes what I am doing and helps me understand what I'm doing and put it in a context and develop it. So um, I am just so grateful. And and he is like never played the glamour game. If anything, he's so anti that that that's why he's off the map, right? <laughs> Yeah. He, he will never take power from a student. He won't want to be around students who want to give him power. It's just like right. clean, you know, right. clean. No, he sounds, I mean, I've always, I've always kind of been interested when I come across his work. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll do that. So, here we go. couple more examples here. Um, you will see the person in the front is actually my husband as a whirling dervish. I love Zicker. And here I am. So I have touched on, this is the Sema, the formal ceremony when they're dressed in the white. My husband is not so active now, but for many years he was pretty active as a Mevlevi whirling dervish. And I, so I went Rumi to, tradition. is that the Rumi? Rumi's, yes, Rumi is their, their, their really their source, yes. Right. And um, I have drawn at so many whirling dervish semas. I kind of lost count. I have like many hundreds of touch drawings. And so um, in the deck again, when I was creating this new deck, Portals of Presence, I went looking into drawings that, were from these deep lineages. I want to find something that carries that deep Sufi mystical lineage. So I found a, a touch drawing that I had created during one of the semas that made itself into the portals of presence. And that I, this is the one that I selected to go into the deck. I just want to ask you a lot of the faces and maybe it's just my uh, kind of prejudice orient. It looks masculine as opposed to feminine. Is there, or are they both? Um, or what? They are definitely both. It could be that the ones that I'm showing, you know, might tend in that way. Right. I think there is something about this frontalness that people interpret as masculine. Right, right, right. I think we have to be careful about what we define as masculine. Yes. But, um, so here I am under, um, Oh, that's interesting. Good. Uh, this is when I did touch drawing at the Parliament of the World's Religions. So I'll, I'll share a little bit about... What, is that in Toronto or... I was in Toronto, yes. Oh, I, these are great to share at the... Uh... Um, and so I, I just, they just did an online one, but this was the second Parliament of the World Religions that I was blessed to draw, sit right in, down on the floor next to the stage. 
I did 168 drawings. This was the biggest workout I've ever had in my you life. You <laughs> did all of these images at the parliament. Yes. Oh, I and was, I was at the Barcelona parliament. I just. Oh, went. really? Yeah, I, I wasn't there. But when it finally came to the U.S., you know. Yes. And um, so I have drawn at many, many, many events. And so that's another, so going into nature, going to sacred sites, mm. um, going to ceremonies, and also, um, you know, important, alive, cultural events, spiritual yeah. events. Mm. Here I am doing touch drawing when the Dalai Lama um, and uh, uh, the Desmond Tutu came, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, came to Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, and did the Seeds of Compassion. And I knew the organizers, and so I reached out to them, and can I draw? And they, they gave me a place in the press booth. So I'm actually surrounded by cameras. And I'm sitting doing touch drawing, and I absolutely love, um, I love that I got to be sort of the cosmic press. That's and and this is a touch, every, every touch drawing I'm showing is one that's actually in the deck. So that and was from the time. Dalai Lama talk, that one right here? Yes. Yes. This very specifically was a touch drawing I did that felt like an inner inner impression of, of, the, of one facet of the Dalai Lama. I could see yeah. that. The, the, mm -hmm. the stars in the eyes and the kind of glow. Yeah. And it's a little sharper and harsher than I would have thought, you know, but like, whoa, I've, I have felt that other times when I've drawn in his presence. So, uh -huh. and one more, um, this is um, Abuelo Margarita uh, from um, Mexico, I think. Uh -huh. um, and this is another conference, the Dawn of Interspirituality, which I've drawn out a couple of times. It's like a mini version of the Parliament of the World Religions. And you can see she's looking at the drawing mm. uh, that I had done. And on the lower right, you see um, that face and kind of just go back and forth and feel there's this just connection yeah. of this, yeah. of her presence. And that, was, that woman, also, was that woman you there in that picture? No, that's someone else. That's her, the woman who was accompanying oh. her, a younger woman traveling with her. So you were and, drawing uh, her. You were drawing her in a sense. The woman in the white. The woman yeah, in abuela, the white. Abuela. Abuela. Right. Abuela. Yeah. While she had been speaking. Okay. Right. And she's coming over to see. Most of the time, people don't know that I've been drawing while they present at these big events. You know. Okay. Um, so let's this was see. small enough. Yeah. Let's see what that one looks like. Uh... There. Whoops. Go yeah. back. Bring it back there. Oh, I could see that. Yes. Very compassionate and, and loving. Yes. And, and she also passed this year. The two elder indigenous elders in my slide talk mm. passed this year. So it's interesting that oh, I'm in some way bringing their presence out, yeah. um, honoring their presence. Yes, yes, yes. And so all of those faces that I showed you, I'm sharing this is how the portals of presence came into being. Um, and now I just, um, so <laughs> that's right. So here, so what I did for the portals was very similar to um, what I did with the soul cards. I just went looking and digging through this body of work and making small prints and shuffling them and pulling, putting ones in and taking ones out and finding more and um, to come to, in the end, I have no idea if I made, if there's such thing as the right selections. I just had to stop. But my husband came into my studio and just snapped a picture while I was working, um, surrounded by these beings in a circle. It's a great, it's it's a great picture, and also in the beginning of your little um, booklet that goes with the deck, it says this is not an oracle in the usual sense. It's an invitation to develop relationship with the greater community of life. Uh, like so you gave the perfect opening because what I have is that statement with some of the images and then music that I created to go with it. Mm -hmm. And it's just two minutes long, but it really takes you inside the yes, day. Yes, please. I oh, will. great. Yes, okay.
portals of presence. Faces drawn from the subtle realms. Approach this deck with an open mind and heart. It is not an oracle in the usual sense. It's an invitation to develop relationship with the great community of life. May these faces drawn from the heart of the world open portals to the subtle worlds, reminding us of the wholeness within which we reside. Gaze at these beings and allow your experience to unfold. So that's new. That's just come out now. These. Yeah. 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 I think people should buy it to go to spiritual retreats, talk about the cards, meditate, mm -hmm. bring them into form. Um, it's, it's something I just said that just the light just changed as we were doing that. <laughs> so um, where can people find these again? Well, they are distributed. Any bookstore can carry them or get them. So if they have a local spiritual bookstore, if they don't have them, they can. It's always helpful to have people going and asking. Uh, uh, worldwide, they have distribution. Certainly Amazon or any online or through my website. Um, so any way, they can be bought in any way. Yeah, all the possibilities. And, and the key, and what's your website again there? What is it? Touchdrawing.com. Right. What, I, what I just did, touchdrawing.com. I actually do um, monthly free portals attunements. So I, my next one is this Sunday. You have to have a deck. <laughs> Can't do it without a deck because you need to have your deck there. But I, I do an ex a live Zoom experience where we get together and we each choose our own card and engage. Um, and I support people to experience the deck in us in an online circle yeah that's from your website they can tune in. everything is on the website right on the front page of the website now it's got all the stuff i do my music that music that you just heard live every sunday night free as my offering as my prayer that's your music you, you that's me that's me i could uh, um that's okay just, you know, it's yeah. crystal balls right or right it's my balls and me singing and um uh, that's become, that's grown. Uh, I, I developed my singing and holding sacred space through sound through my teaching of touch drawing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of got too big to be just contained by that. And, you know, so I offer it now as what I call song bath sanctuary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what do you have coming up and what are you working on? I mean, you're, you've had this complete, is there, what's your next project? <sighs> Um, well, right now it's like letting people know about this deck and in the spiritual enliven enlivenment of it to now move more fully in my own self 
into how how can this be a portal to help us on the planet at this time? Mm -hmm. So I have gotten the message that um, it's not just like a product that you put out in the world, that I am a part of this deck and, and I there is a living portal to assist in, um, in the growth and development of that and the use of the deck to help people open their sense of relationship and communion with all these facets of life, subtle beings. And in this deck, I don't, you know, I shared specific stories. So anyone who watches this knows, you know, like the secret that a few of them are from this or for that, because when you actually get the deck, I don't tell, um, I don't tell you this was created in Roslyn Chapel. This was created during a whirling dervish summer. I let them speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so if these, so each card is a portal. And when you spend time and gaze deeply, whatever being in the subtle realms wants to reach you, we can use this as a meeting place. Mm -hmm. So I hope that this is my contribution to the planet because in essence, I feel like we humans need to um, heal our rift with the rest of life and come back into relationship, which we used to have when we were doing those rituals and, and indigenous communities knew how to be in relationship with life. Um, we need to, have, to learn how to do that again and then develop it and evolve it further wherever it's wanting to go in the future. So this is my... And we can't get through our problems all by ourselves. We've gotten into this situation because we've been autistic. We've been like, I don't know how to communicate with anything else in life. Nothing else is conscious. You know, I'm a human being. And um, how can we begin just to realize that, you know, this is a being. <laughs> Everywhere is a sacred being, some level of consciousness. And so this deck has a little... You know, the guidebook does give little practices that you can do to actually use the deck and then even go outside and connect with something in nature. And maybe after opening to the presence in the deck, you might then open to the presence of a tree more fully. So it's, it, this is my service to the it, planet. And, so the deck you know. itself is like a portal to the spirit world. As opposed, yeah. a, 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 in addition to actually the individual portal cards that you created there. Yes, yes. And one of the practices is to make a big circle and sit in the center. Mm -hmm. I also created two guided audio experiences. When people get the deck, um, I even have a little um, Q code. Oh, this one doesn't have it. Where you can go to a page on the website and access um, audio recordings where I guide you into an experience. And one of them is with a single card and the other one is setting out a circle, going into the center and then sort of feeling the energy coming from the larger collective portal and then receiving and then giving to them and then getting the, the energy circulating in this larger portal. Yes. Beautiful. So you're yeah. creating portals with the portal deck and yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Deborah. This has been a whole education in art in ritual and creativity and connecting yeah. with the spirit. So thank you. And it's been wonderful talking with you because I really feel like you, you're already in the place where you, uh, how you understand things that everything I say, I could feel yeah has a place in you to receive. And so it's really a pleasure yes, to talk with you. I yeah. think your feeling sense must have been developed as an artist. As you feel into these images, you are mm -hmm. becoming more sensitive to the, the world because you become a medium, a conduit for creation itself or the mm -hmm. vehicle of expression. So mm -hmm. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I've been talking to Deborah Goff-Chapron and her beautiful decks, Portals of Presence. 
and and the soul, yeah, there it is and soul cards the soul they are cards. very complementary actually you can bring the portals to bring another dimension into your soul cards work that's kind of how i see it now i, yeah. I can't wait to see what else you do i know we want to <laughs> We'll stay in touch. <laughs> yeah. Alan's, okay, this is Alan Stein right. for New Realities. Thank you, Jan Goldstaff, for putting this together. And if you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com. My book, Making Contact. We just have been making contact, Deborah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.